In this demonstration, we will make a mill turn with C axis and Y axis. So first we're going to import a parasolid, bring it in onto a C axis horizontal lathe. This will be a metric program, so we're going to select metric now. When it imports, the stock boundary automatically shrink wraps around the part so you can see the stock boundary is set. We're going to change these values to represent the finished stock rather than, or excuse me, the, the rough stock to start with. These numbers that shrunk wrap are actually the finished part dimensions. Now down in here, auto clearance, we won't be using auto clearance. The stock is 275, so the clearance value we will use is 275 and then Z3. Tool change. We'll set this to 300 millimeters X and also 300 millimeters Z. The shank diameter. This is the turning tool shank diameter. One inch or 25.4 millimeters. And then the mill type tool holders. We'll set to a cat 40. Let's save this information and we'll begin working. Now, as we begin working, because we're in a mill turn environment, there are four predefined coordinate systems. So these predefined coordinate systems allow you to work on the Y axis, on the front axis, the XY plane, the back side, or the ZX, which is primarily your two axis turning axis. So the first thing we want to do is bring in some tooling. And if you notice now on the tool list, we don't have any tools. On the process list, there are no processes. Then over on the operation list, we don't have any operations showing here. As we bring in tools, do the machining, etc., they can be turning operations that are controlled by this icon or milling operations controlled by this icon. So we're going to build the first tool. It will be an 80 degree. It will have a 0.8 tool nose radius. The inscribed circle will be 12.7 and the thickness will be 4.76. Now if we choose none, we only see the insert. We're going to go ahead and put this on a tool holder and it will point down and left so it can run the front face and also do the roughing around the outside diameter. Now with this tool, we'll drag it into the process position and we'll go ahead and make a turning operation. This turning operation can be a contour, a roughing operation, a threading operation, or a drilling. We're going to rough the front face, so we're going to choose a contour, just a single pass contour. Now this will be on the front face. We'll clear it three millimeters on the way in and exit at three millimeters. And this is on the Z axis. Then no entry lines, no exit lines. Um, surface feet per minute. Uh, let's go back up on that. And it's actually, excuse me, surface meters per minute. Then the entry feed rate, uh, let's say 300. And that's millimeters per revolution. And then the cutting, let's say 150. We're going to ask the software to do material only clearance. So it will automatically clear the material by that specified value of 3 millimeters. Corner break not necessary for the front face. And we'll leave 0 0.25 millimeters of stock. So let's go ahead and close this. Now, at the moment, we don't have any easy way to select this. We could extract geometry, but GibbsCam has Profiler. And Profiler allows you to click on that profile anyway at any location. Notice the profiler sees the spun shape of the finished part, just like it's spinning in the lathe. So we're going to cut that front face. We're not cutting uphill, we're cutting downhill. The white start point tells the toolpath where to start. Then we're going to right mouse click that toolpath. And the reason we're going to do that is notice the dark blue highlight is highlighting all the way around the part. It's not the cut we want to make. 
So we're going to right mouse click the start point and tell it it will cut a single feature. Notice now it's only cutting that front face feature. Then this end point, we could drag it close to center line, but if we right click it and tell it move that end point exactly to zero and apply that value, now the end point, the end of toolpath is at zero. Let's go ahead and click do it. Notice now we have our first machining operation. Also, if I zoom this down, you can see from the clearance tool change, 300 millimeters, X and Z, the tool rapids from that tool change location into the Z clearance, and then at that point comes in and begins machining. It clears the material by 3 millimeters, and then begins the machining down to center line, and rapids back out at 3 millimeters. So the next machining operation, we will deselect this one, deselect the tool path on the screen. We will delete this process. Then we will go to stored machining processes. The stored machining processes. Front face, we've already done this. So, well, we want revolver actually. So we've already completed the front face. We're going to rough the outside diameter. Notice it did not replace tool 1, and it did not add a duplicate of tool 1. That stored process was using this same tool that we built originally. Now in this stored process, notice it is a lathe roughing process. We're going to rough the outside diameter. We're going to clear the material at 275 millimeters on the diameter. So it grabbed this value automatically and loaded it into the stored process. Next, we're going to cut in the forward direction, the cut depth. Uh, we'll go ahead and cut this at, um, oh, ah, three millimeters should be fine. And that is per side. Then, as we come down, the corner break, yeah, we'll corner break. The finish amount of stock, let's leave 0.4 stock, and that's on all sides. So the front will have four, and each side will have four. Then the surface meters per minute, oh, I don't like that. Let's go back up to 205. And then the entry feed, eh, let's set that at 150, and we'll set this at 250 for the contour feed. Again, we will use material only. And this time, we're going to tell it, do not cut X negative. It will prevent the roughing operation from falling down into the thread relief area here. So we can close the process. Let's zoom into the area we'll, where we will be working. We're going to start on that face. We're cutting in that direction. Let's tell it start out in front of the material. Then we'll drag the black end point, excuse me, the end feature box to that diameter. Let's right click the end point and tell it move that three millimeters past the end of the material, the part, the finished part shape, not the end of the stock. Then we'll tell it, go ahead and do it. And so now we have that roughing operation. And you can see it is not cutting the hex. It is leaving material on the hex. Also, around the revolver, it's leaving the material that's needed for the cleanup cuts. Deselect the operation. Deselect the tool path. Now, it's not necessary to delete this process. So we will highlight this process. When we import a new stored process, it will replace the existing highlighted process. So this time we're going to bring in the finished thread, uh, the finished OD, and the finished thread process. So notice we now have two new tools, a VNMG, and also a threading insert. Then we imported the finished contour. This says primarily cut the OD, but we will also use it to cut the front face to finish. Then on the thread process, we're cutting an ISO style thread, which is metric. We've entered all of the values. So the pitch in millimeters, it's a six pitch. Then the nominal diameter, the major diameter is a 100. So it's a 100 dash six. The depth of cut, all of the information is here. We've specified a clearance diameter for the entry and exit. 
we specified the end point, which is right at that location, and start three millimeters in front of the part, and also put out a canned cycle. So let's go ahead and select the toolpath. We're going to start on that front face, cutting in that direction. Again, we will start on the uh, end on that diameter. This start point, let's make an adjustment until it start at zero. And notice that start point snaps right to the zero position on the feature. The end point, let's go ahead and adjust that until it end three millimeters past the end of that feature. And so it does. Let's click do it. Notice we now have two new machining operations. Go into an isometric. We're going to deselect the operations. These two processes, we can delete these. Let's do a save. So we'll save this information and name it millimeter revolver. Let's save it. Okay. Now, let's go into machine simulation. And then, and I did a right click to choose machine simulation. Let's click on the icon and it loads machine simulation. Down in this area, we're going to click on this icon, and here I'll pull this up where you can see it better. Notice we're going to choose machine simulation. Then, if we click this arrow, we're going to go set some preferences. So the settings. Let's tell it, give us a cutting tolerance of 0.03 mm. Show our bodies at 0.03 mm, and that's the cord height on each of these. Then the speed of cutting show us at 20 millimeters and the rapid show us at 50 millimeters. And we will apply these values and we can close this dialog. Next we'll go back to this dialog. We're going to choose op color mode, not the cut color, but we want to give each operation a unique color. And we'll close this. And then the last thing we want to do is double check everything else on here, and it's ready to go. Oop, cancel that. And let's go ahead and slow this down a little bit, and we'll render this. So here on the threading cycle, you can see the part is actually turning, and machine simulation is simulating the part turning.